Good morning, welcome back to the workshop. Brilliant to have you here. Today is going to be part two of making the Damascus Steel Straight Razor. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this goes. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to learn a lot. Thank you for joining me. So of course after forging, this has all that heavy forge scale on it. I'm going to grind it off with a hard disk on an angle grinder, then I can move on to the belts. I'm going to move up to using a fresh 60 grit and I'm going to make all the surfaces nice and flat and even and I'm going to go 60, 120, 240 on everything. trying to work out about where it's going to end up being cut. I think that's probably where I'm going to go for the cut and then for the pivot I'm probably going to go right about here. So I'm now going to take this and I'm going to go in the mill and I'm going to drill my hole using that same jig that I used on the kukri. Um, now I do have a little worry right now because obviously after I forged it I did a load of you know normalizing cycles however you know I did just heat that up with a torch and obviously heating that up like that is going to make it probably cool down a little faster. So I'm a little worried about how well the drill is going to cut, but we'll see. I'm going to be using a drill bit that's about three thousandths of an inch over an eighth of an inch. I think that's a reasonable thing to do because then when I have my eighth inch uh, pin for the rivet that uh, allows us to pivot, hopefully that'll you know mean that it's easy enough to move around and kind of won't get stuck. So in order for me to get as good of an edge as possible, I think it's going to be, as ever, very important to make sure that the edge is in the middle of the blade and also make sure that it's straight. So I'm going to use my height gauge, a granite block and some dicum to scribe this up and make sure it's perfect. So I saw this YouTube video where a guy had his contact wheel and he had his, uh, his table on the grinder and he had a piece of steel that was clamped to, the, uh, clamped to the plate behind the razor so that he could push on it like this, make sure that it spat out the same amount when he went from side to side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take my clamps, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clamp this up and I'm using this. This is thicker than the spine. The spine right now is a little under six millimeters. Um, I'm going to use this being a little thicker to uh, make sure that this is still parallel. Give it a little light clamp and then kind of give it a little, little few taps and make sure that it's, uh, it's where it needs to be. This is a 10 inch wide contact wheel, 2 inches, uh, sorry, 10 inch diameter contact wheel, 2 inches, uh, two inches wide. Hopefully this is going to be good for this razor right now. Uh, right now it's a little proud of 20 millimeters, so I guess they call this a, uh, what do they call this, a 3-4 razor, a 3 quarters razor, um, and obviously it's just below 6 millimeters. So hopefully this will get the kind of proportions that are necessary. I'm thinking that this gap right here is actually a little bit too wide for the reason that as I come in here it's leaning over quite a fair ways over there and it's contacting here quite aggressively and not moving down the spine. Um, all I can do is guess and my guess is is that even once I hit that center line this won't have moved back far enough to get a deep enough of a hollow. So I'm going to try and find an intermediary gap between this and that other piece that I had. This 
technique seems to work pretty well. I've now got the, uh, the edge is still very thick, absolutely, but I've got the bevel roughed out. It's gonna be pulled down further, the edge is gonna go infinitesimally thin, but I don't want to take it that thin just yet. I'm gonna go into the heat treat. So I've lit the forge, I'm gonna bring it up to, you know, 850 degrees Celsius or so. Give this two normalizing cycles. I've already done two normalizing cycles yesterday after the forging. I'm then going to go into the quench. When I go to the tempering oven, however, um, thank you very much, guys, for reminding me of this. These knives are meant to be extremely hard, so I'm not gonna temper it very far. I'm now going to put this in the tempering oven, but I'm not going to show you that because the last time I showed you my oven You all complained and said I needed to clean it. Um, I have cleaned it. Of course It's it's just that I'm, I'm not going to show you it but for whatever reason so here the razor has been heat treated I'm really excited with how this is going to turning out You know oftentimes when you do go and harden it and heat treat it a lot of the pattern pops out I can't wait to have this finished and etched. It already looks pretty stunning right now. I like this shape, it's gonna be good. Obviously there's plenty of final refinement to go. From now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably go back to, yeah, probably go back to the contact wheel on the grinder and continue bringing down the edge and uh, bring it down really nice and thin on the 60 grip before going to 120, 240, then trizact. Then I'll start finishing out the rest of it. grinding away here and it's been going very well. I'm starting to get this edge really nice and thin. I'm pleased with how this is looking, but you can see this radius, I think it's starting a little too far up. The angle is a little too obtuse. I need to make it a little more acute so that it's uh, a little thinner further back on the blade. The way I set it up for the current angle is I put this little square in there as a little bit of a shim, um, and that's a little too much, so I'm gonna find something a little thinner than this square, and I'm gonna readjust this bottom plate right here to hopefully make a little bit more of an acute angle and uh, bring, a little, uh, bring a little bit of a thinner edge into it. So even though the difference in thickness here was actually only 0.8 millimeters, you can see it's gonna be a vast difference in the, in the way that it hits the contact wheel. So I'm gonna give that a go, even just by scratching it along. You can see that it's hitting right on that edge as opposed to on the, on the rest of the bevel. So all through today I've been live streaming on Twitch, uh, links to that below, I'm going to try and do this as often as possible, live stream behind the scenes, it's going to be epic, but I'm live streaming on Twitch today, and uh, somebody just told me, hey, now that your grind's so high, you should be able to take out that jig, because one of the issues I've been having is I go in, I just kind of, you know, it goes and makes that exact noise, and I mess it up a little bit because of how tight that jig was, so I've gotten rid of it, I'm now going to do it freehand and just be really careful gonna make sure that I can bring that grind all the way down to here. I'd moved the jig a second time so there was 0.58 millimeters of gap between this and the jig, which gave me just the perfect amount of kind of tilt there. Um, now I'm gonna get rid of it and just use my hands to try and get this grind straight um, and get it all the way down to the blade edge. Okay, so here's where I am right now. You can see, when you look real close, that I have a good hollow all the way down to about a sixteenth of an inch or so away from the edge. Um, it's really nice and thin. It's starting to get a really nice little cross section here. You can see the grind is still curved. It's not quite perfect there. I think I'll be able to fix it by just putting a little more pressure here. Right now, I'm gonna go to 120 grit. I'm gonna have plenty of material to cut through anyway to get past the 60 grit to a true 120 and then on beyond. So I think I'm just gonna be just about right with that 16th of an inch. Once I go to the 120, I cut deep enough. It should bring that grind all the way up past the edge and make it just perfect without having to uh, decrease the height of it too much, if that makes any sense, by taking it down too thin. Just checking in to say, holy moly, this is going beautifully. I went to the 120 grit 
and you can see that I actually went ahead and put a slightly scalloped belt on. Zim Knives, kindly who was on my uh, on my Twitch stream, let me know to kind of crush over these edges, and I did, and it meant that I have this beautiful little sweeping plunge line here, and that's been a nice, easy plunge line to make. Um, you can see there's just a tiny little bit of material here, almost going up to the spine. That's about perfect, and the edge is super duper thin, so I'm ready to move on to 240 grit. I'm gonna put another scalloped belt on. These are uh, zirconium belts. I pulled them initially because I wanted to use them on wood, on handles and stuff. I thought there'd be a deeper scallop. You know, it turns out this scallop is not necessarily gonna be so useful on the handles, but holy moly, I, again, I'm just super pleased with how well that worked to make this beautiful little soft edge on the, on the, on the plunge line. I'm really pleased with that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. This has been part two. Be sure to go check out part three tomorrow. It's gonna to be linked up down below here when it's live, but if you hit subscribe, you'll be able to see it. Thank you so much for watching. And you guys thought I wouldn't show you the pattern real quick before ending today's episode. Have a look at that. How awesome is that? Oh my goodness, I could not be happier with how that little billet turned out. That is so, so cool. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friend, and I will see you very soon for part three, where I make and fit the handles on this beautiful straight razor. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.